So today we're going to take a look at tables P and Q on the reference tables. These are going to be tables that help us to identify and name the different types of hydrocarbons. Again, hydrocarbons are substances, organic compounds, that contain only hydrogen and carbon. So the first thing we want to look at is we can have a picture, a structural formula like this one here, and we want to notice right away that we have carbon and hydrogen, a hydrocarbon, and there's a double bond right here. So when we come to look at table Q, we want to take a look. If you take a look right here under structural formula, you can see that the carbon-carbon bond here is a single bond. That is for alkenes. Since we have a double bond in our structural formula, we know that we have an alkene right here. So the alkene has to have at least one double bond. In a double bond, there are two lines, which is how many electrons. If you think about that, there's two in this first line two in the second line, so there's a total of four electrons being shared. Alkenes are often used to make other substances, so we may link a bunch of these together and eventually end up with something like plastic. So this can be found on table Q. Also, taking a look at table Q, you have this guy right here. Now, the first thing I see, again, it's a hydrocarbon. C's and H's only. The next thing I see is that there is a triple bond right here. So I take a look at table Q. Um, to give me some more information. So this triple bond right here is going to be a total of six valent electrons being shared. Alkynes, similar to alkenes, are also used to make other substances like plastics. Okay, let's talk about how I'm going to name these, because we're not going to just call them alkene, alkene, alkyne. We're going to give them specific names. So when we're looking at table P, table P gives us a bunch of prefixes so if you look right here, we have a bunch of prefixes that identify the number of carbons we see in the hydrocarbon. So if I have a substance and I'm looking at it and I realize it's a hydrocarbon, I can count the number of carbons. If there was five carbons, I know that my prefix is going to be pent. The next thing we want to take a look at is table Q. These two tables together help us name. And if you're looking, we end um, alkanes will always end with this A-N-E ending. So you can see this is F which means two carbons, but ane telling me that it's an alkene. If, again, I look at this next one, F, again, still telling me two carbons, but that ene -E means that there's a double bond between those carbons. And lastly, that yne ending will tell me that I have a triple bond. So you want to look at those endings to identify if we have single, double, or triple bond between the carbon-carbon in the, our substance. So let's give this a try. Well, we want to name this substance right here. I have C3H8. I look at the structural formula. This is the structural formula right here. And I see that there are three carbons and they are bonded in single bonds. I don't care about these H's. I care about the fact that there are three carbons here and their connections are single bonds. So I think about that for a moment. I go to table Q and I know that since I have single bonds, it's got to be an alkene. But what's his true name? So three carbons come over here. Three carbons means prope. So I'm going to give the prefix prope and the ending ane to signify that it's an alkene. And this guy's name is propane. If you take a look at my next one, C4H8, here's a diagram of it, structural formula. Here I have a double bond. Double bonds give me the signal that I have an alkene. So the alkene with one, two, three, four carbons come over here. Four carbons is bute. The ending will be ene. This guy's name is butene. And lastly, I have C5H8. Here's his structural formula, a little bit different looking. But if you take a look, I see a triple bond. I know right away this is an alkyne with one, two, three, four, five carbons. So I come over here to table P, five carbons. That prefix is pent, end with the alkyne ending of YNE. And this guy's name is pentine. Let's try a few more. If I take a look at this next one here, I want to give the name and the formula for an alkene with two carbons. So the first thing I want to do is find out the prefix for two carbons. Come over here. The prefix for two carbons is F. The ending for that will be whatever an alkene's ending is, A-N-E. So I know his name is ethane. Well, then how do I figure out his formula? Using this general formula here, since I know that carbons, there's only two of them, that's the N that I plug in right here. So I know he's going to be C2, then put that 2 for this N also, 2 times 2, 4, plus 2 is 6. This guy's formula is C2H6. 
Okay, try it with this guy. If I have an alkene with five carbons, come here for the prefix. Prefix for five is pent. I know that he's an alkene, so his name is pentene. Now I want to come down here. I've got to use this structural, sorry, this general formula. If you take a look, five carbons, I'm going to put the five in for this end and for this one. So C5H2 times five gives me H10. The alkene named pentene has a formula of C5H10. And lastly, I have an alkyne with six carbons. So I come up here to the prefix table. Six is hex. Again, knowing that it's an alkyne means that I'm going to end with Y-N-E. So this guy's name is hexine. I'm going to use this general formula, plugging in the N of six, because N always tells me the number of carbons. You can see that right down here on table Q. So plug in six right here for C. 6, H, 2 times 6, which is 12, minus 2, which is 10. A little bit of math here. And you're going to end up with C6H10 for your alkyne called hexine.